Quint. Oh, well, great job. Is going to get demo there as Quint. And now come on. And welcome back, Saints, to another broadcast here at NACE League of Legends on the docket for today. I am Adam or Adam Trolls. Alongside me is Kaylee, as Hello. always. Very happy to be bringing you this broadcast today on uh, what should be a pretty... It's hard to hide it. It's just going to be a pretty dominant performance, it feels, out yeah, of St. Clair. we tried to take a look at both teams, and we couldn't find very much information about the team we are against today, which, honestly, I forget the name. Please remind me. Shenandoah. Thank you! <laughs> but, um, so far, we haven't been able to find any information, sadly. From what we've heard, Saints should be on the winning side of today, but give you guys a quick little pre-show here we wanted to give you a quick rundown of the patch notes that just came out recently i believe it was the patch notes for worlds this is the patch after Worlds. so they yeah. changed a bunch of stuff they moved a lot of things towards off meta and mm -hmm. of course they buffed Kaylee's favorite champion so go, she's go, even go on go my ahead. shirt today <laughs> <laughs> can, it, can anybody really blame me? Come on. So I'll just give it a start off and get that out of the way. Jinx was buff. She, her AD ratio went from 57 to 59. So it's not a huge buff, but it does give her a little bit of more time to fight in the early game against these insane uh, buffed ADCs that are currently in the meta right now. So she might have a chance of getting picked. We've already seen that she was picked a couple times in Worlds. Oh my god. It's so amazing. <laughs> But some other um, champions that were patched, or not patched, but buffed as well was Nasus, Syndra, and Blitzcrank. Can you give us a rundown? Well, yeah. I mean, Nasus, main thing that sort of was buffed about him was to get a little bit more range on your siphoning. Striker alt ticks a little bit quicker, but the main thing is that the wither attack mm -hmm. speed slow now 75% of the actual slow, which means you can get like a 70-80% attack speed slow yeah. once you max that out, which is a little bit unfair in a just, lot of ways. Just, just a little bit. In terms, <laughs> if, especially if you're relying on movement speed and that attack speed. Yeah. Callista cries every single time now. Mm -hmm. Of course, Blitzcrank Jungle got buffed. It's it's a lot to take in there. They just made them have a lot of attack speed, have a lot of <laughs> damage on jungle creeps as well, so they can actually clear as well. Syndra got her mini rework there, getting, giving her a little bit of a Rabadon's passive mm -hmm. on her passive as well as those upgraded abilities as time goes on. I think, honestly, out of all the yep. champions, Syndra's the one we're most likely to see today. For sure. I've actually played a little bit of it, and it was a little... Like, it wasn't anything too different where it's like, okay, this is... Like, I need to relearn the entire champion again. It's just a little bit, like, extra... A, like damage that you get out of it and it's honestly really nice i like it personally uh, but i have heard that even our league team has tested out support nasus and they said that it worked out really well i'm not sure if we're gonna see anything like that today and then speaking about blitzcrank jungle it's been in a couple of my games it's like it's not even like it's really hard to fight against it's just frustrating yeah. why am a, why is a robot sprinting at me out of jungle <laughs> And hooking me into the river. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and I mean, the biggest thing is just, you think about the gank tools that Blitzcrank offers yeah. when it's support. You know, you pull the carry in, and yep. all of a sudden, you have the freest gank of your life. Imagine if that's the jungler. You have gank set up through your bot lane. You have a mm -hmm. thresh or something to hook them instead. And yeah. you just say, hey, I will pull you even closer. There's a lot of tools that the champion has just kit-wise that makes it strong on roams that now you just put it in the jungle and you get another support, which yeah. might end up working out better. So curious to see if we'll see anything along those lines. I mean, yeah. it's, it's difficult to know what to expect, especially mm -hmm knowing the team and knowing that they like to go a little bit they play their own style in a sense but especially when you're facing off a team where you were heavily favored to win sometimes this does give you a little bit more room for yeah. experimentation it gives me a big reminder of when support like um art and sensor supports were so strong that you would bring them mid lane and you would have like a master e jungle and it just game over yeah. from the start from the start there was no way to fight against it but on the other side of things we do want to also mention about the games that Sa we recently were able to watch saints play in we did miss the one in this tournament specifically um i believe it was tuesday that they did play it they did win it we're not sure exactly what the details of it were but congrats to saints for that and obviously our big victory that we were able to broadcast last time both of us was against uh fisher college so we're hoping that we would see something great again from the Saints today. But for now, we will be throwing it to a little break in between the uh, right now, obviously, and the uh, draft phase. So stay tuned. We'll see you soon. Job by Sway to adjust the Saints. They should be able to actually take this B point. I think Samson's are too far off to contest. And the frags are going to come through. And the Saints, they are going to walk away. They are going to get the capture. And they're going to win Gava 2 second time around. Wow, they find. Honestly, even if you give away your spot, you're going to have time to reposition. Audi, going to whiff the first shot. We'll find the kill. Wow, movement galore. Going to think just about every angle being held here. Evex not looking, though. Caillou's now in behind. 
Gets one on Havex, the second. Smoothies with a kill at the exact same time on Twitchway. Trademark is going to be popped. Not going to slow anyone, however, as... Wow. Get down Caillou with an absolute spray down on three of them. One, two, three headshots. Smoothies to take down the one. If the Saints can maybe try to make a play. Caillou finding his third. He's going to find four. Can he find the ace? Only one more to creep up on, and it's Pope with 30 HP. Caillou. Trying to find it, gonna spray through the wall here. Sheriff is in hand, and there's a second ace for the site there. It looks like the control is gonna go over to St. Clair. Yeah, already just starting off. You know, yeah, welcome back to the stream, by the yeah. way. You know, <laughs> just getting right into the action here. Of course, this is a map that we've seen St. Clair do really well on, on hard points specifically, so not gonna be too surprised with anything that comes through from them. Of course, already resting control of this game, and only one kill, two kills now, going over to the side of Northeastern, but already you can see the dominance this team is ready to pop down. As you can see, for half of this game, they've been on this hard point, absolutely demolishing everything that Northeastern are able to pull through for themselves. Decreasing once again back on this point. But actually, they will finally get the double digits. I was worried for a little bit for Northeastern. There we go. This is, this is really different. That was quick. Oh, wow. This is, yeah, this is the play. Oh. You gotta watch. Look at them lot. Saints in this defending round. Bendy, how many can he find here? There's one. Second oh. one not gonna be found. South Carolina, it's been a lot slower offensively for, you know, Carolina this game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you didn't get that momentum off of that initial play there and Spood. A passing play up here. Spood slows possession. Get a wall ride for a bit and get that second touch as well. So Spood's great job of playing keep away in South Carolina's end so far. Oh, is that one going to weave it in? Oh, uh, weird. Now here in game two, we're seeing a clean 3-0 here coming yeah. into the end of the game. Last 15 seconds going to come in. Quint trying to find one. Cats just barely taps it off. This is very much, you know, they have all the time in the world to get it back. Spood's. Trying to get it done by himself. Now Quint's gonna be there for the follow. Not able to find that second touch. Kamal is gonna be there for the follow. And bang, home. The Saints are like pretty heavily committing up on this midline too. And I think that might start to be a slight issue if they can't defend properly. Yeah, Spoots trying to get another one of those nose wow. dribbles and handoff. Yeah, yeah. Misfire, two members eyeing down the ball. Neither going to chase it. That will leave you in a world of hurt, especially if it's in the crease. South Carolina, once again, just maximizing the chances. They see a window, they're taking it. You know, they're, they're opening the window, running right through it, jumping in, and the Saints trying to get back in the score sheet here. They're trying to get a couple shots back to back. Spoods and Quint, maybe tied up a little bit. Spoods, great job to get by the defender, gonna set up Quint. Oh, well, great job is gonna get demoed there as Quint, and now Kamal trying to find the second touch. Will he get the angle? Not gonna quite get the angle on Og there. And now back into the corner, once more Spoods. Get the reset, try to find something over the middle. Gonna see Quint and Spoods. Gonna putting engagement, so he's more than happy to keep contesting. Rocket pushed up very, very far here. Gonna try to find something. Is gonna find one, two on the spray. Gonna find third. the third. Gonna find the fourth. Can he find the fifth? Ace. One more to play. Got the pistol and an ace right up on the start of the round. Rushes up, drops all five off, and the Saints are gonna take. I've been really spotted out or given any info on their position, so. Looks like they're setting up for this B hit. And oh. they're already two picks coming out from the Saints. Yeah, a setup it was. They're gonna find a third there. Multiple members getting involved. Rocket gonna get taken out there. So now we're down to the 4v2. We got RD whipping Domingo. Trying to make some kind of play here. Smoke is gonna go through. I believe Amali's gonna go through as well. Mig once again gonna find that pick. And now all on Domingo with this off. So he is gonna get shut down right away by the only person to stop anything getting ready from the Saints, but they're actually. <laughs> They're just shift walking it all the way towards oh, oh hearing Lieber in the back of JBH Rocket. You're here to shoot these out and you find it's really gonna not allow Wayland to get out of the spawn yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, and using that slow can actually set up your Widowmaker pretty nicely because if Emran already has pretty nasty aim, a character moving at half speed is going to be pretty free low for him to get those picks. And we've seen they're finding those early picks on the DPS every single time. Crime going to find that kill onto Waifu there. And now Squeak, once again, just W King with this Reinhardt taking out everybody left wow. and right, swinging through left and right. Going to find three kills there in the Saints on an absolute tear right now. Now up to Sepias and supports both find picks consistently. Definitely a very good sign for them. So they're going to love this start and they're going to watch these. Gonna watch these plays back and be in love with it. Yeah, and seeing that Baptiste at the end. He feels comfortable in any single role, and the Saints are gonna use it, and the Saints are absolutely slaughtering Wayland to start things off. Yeah, with a Symmetra choice on the side of, Saint, uh, of the Saints, which we haven't seen that. So I'm looking to Sim, you know, it's just like focus Sim turret the entire, that's all the comms are. So yeah. you understand how frustrating it is to play against, and especially when I'm, I start like this, you just get that yeah. free turret damage or the free laser damage right off the door, and then you basically just play back to your backline, and their backline has been flawless so far, yeah. just about. 
especially with a uh, mini rework to Symmetra yes. on her teleporter. Yep. Um, I used to be a Symmetra main, actually, <laughs> um, so I was honestly, whoa. Saints are just, this is absolute, this is crime. The cart hasn't even been touched yet. Crime finding every headshot right now. Going to be a little widow on widow crime, so to speak, there, and he cannot be stopped right now in this backland and Wayland. I'm not sure exactly what you try to swap through or what play you try to make, but you got to dig deep in the bag for something here because they haven't found a single thing so far. And look at the Symmetra damage just burning through the side of Wayland. They just, they can't go anywhere. Yeah, and like you said, there's, with no, with no second tank. These headshots, Emran is going to find the first pick, but that Moira Orb going to come back to get him. So nice little one for one trade. We're going to see uh, Silver on the Orisa now. So I think a much better frontlining tank pick. You get the deflect. The rework for Orisa made Orisa one of the strongest tanks in the entire game. You get great, you get the, the Fortify with the gold armor, you get the Deflect. Yeah. The ultimate has much more value than it did before as far as like team fighting and everything. Heisenberg can end up off the map there, I believe. Probably at Lucio's hands and the Saints. They're going to wipe this one out. Red X is going to find three on the triple and the Saints just like that. They're going to clean that one. Getting one or two seconds on the site before somebody's coming to contest it. And with that, they found themselves a nice 20 point lead here as the Saints are going to start swarming this hard point, but now the Samson's got full control. Saints are going to have to respawn and set up another push. Not if KMC is just out shooting them. Headshots go a little wide there on Euper. Oh. Now KMC can force a regen. Perfect grenade. Wow, wow. absolute. Two grenades, actually, both of them. A <laughs> rare hit. Rare. Rare. can find like one or two frags, and that's going to hurt you really pretty bad. Their smoke show is going to be the one to fall as well. So now all on Euper. Griffin Guard Dog trying to hold off Griff. Gonna find the kill on KMC. Now Sway gonna trade out Griff there. So now down to two. Audi gonna swing. Great job to find. That might end up being critical for the Saints there. But KMC gonna follow. Find that AR kill. Gonna push up to the point now. They're gonna get some pressure. Only 1.3 seconds. The Saints cannot afford to get knocked off this point. They're gonna find a couple frags. Great job by Sway to adjust. The Saints, they should be able to actually take this B point. I think Samson's are too far off to contest. And the frags are gonna come through. And the Saints, they are going to walk away. They are gonna get the capture. And they're gonna win Gava 2 second time around. Wow, they find. Honestly, even if you give away your spot, you're gonna have time to reposition. Audi gonna whiff the first shot. We'll find the kill. Wow, movement galore. Gonna think just about every angle being held here. Evex not looking though. Caillou's now in behind. Gets one on Havex, the second. Smoothies with a kill at the exact same time on Archway. Trademark is going to be popped. Not going to slow anyone, however, as wow. down Caillou with an absolute spray down on three of them. One, two, three headshots. Smoothies to take down the one that the Saints can maybe try to make a play. Caillou finding his third. He's going to find four. Can he find the ace? Only one more to creep up on, and it's Pope with 30 HP. Caillou. Trying to find it, gonna spray through the wall here. Sheriff is in hand, and there's a second ace for the site there. It looks like the control is gonna go over to St. Clair. Yeah, already just starting off. You know, yeah, welcome back to the stream, by the yeah. way. You know, <laughs> just getting right into the action here. Of course, this is a map that we've seen St. Clair do really well on, on hard points specifically, so not gonna be too surprised with anything that comes through from them. Of course, already resting control of this game, and only one kill, two kills now, going over to the side of Northeastern, but already you can see the dominance this team is ready to pop down. As you can see, half of this game, they've been on this hard point, absolutely demolishing everything that Northeastern are able to pull through for themselves. Increasingly, once again, back on this point. But actually, they will finally get the double digits. I was worried for a little bit for Northeastern. There we go. This is, this is really difficult. That was quick. Oh, wow. This is, yeah, this is the play. Oh. You gotta watch. Look at him live. Saints in this defending round. Bendy, how many can he find here? There's one. Second one not going to be found. South Carolina, it's been a lot slower offensively for, you know, Carolina this game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you didn't get that momentum off of that initial play there. And Spoot, the passing play up here. Spoot slows possession. Get a wall ride for a bit and get that second touch as well. So Spoot, great job of playing keep away in South Carolina's end so far. Oh, is that one going to weave it in? Oh, uh, weird. Now here in game two, we're seeing a clean 3-0 here coming yeah. into the end of the game. Last 15 seconds going to come in. Quint. Trying to find one, Cats just barely taps it off. This is very much, you know, they have all the time in the world to get it back. Spoots trying to get it done by himself. Now Quint's gonna be there for the follow. Not able to find that second touch. Kamal is gonna be there for the follow and bang home. The Saints are like pretty heavily committing up on this midline tune. And I think that might start to be a slight issue if they get the better properly. Yeah, Spoots trying to get another one of those nose wow. dribbles and handoff. Yeah, yeah. Misfire, two members eyeing down the ball, neither going to chase it. That will leave you in a world of hurt, especially if it's in the crease. 
South Carolina once again just maximizing the chances. They see a window, they're taking it. You know, they're, they're opening the window, running right through it, jumping in, and the Saints trying to get back in the score sheet here. They're trying to get a couple shots back to back. Spoons and Quint maybe tied up a little bit. Spoons, great job to get by the defender, gonna set up Quint. Oh, well, great job is gonna get demoed there as Quint. And now Kamal trying to find the second touch. Will he get the angle? Not gonna quite get the angle on Og there. And now back into the corner once more. Spoons. Get the reset, try to find something over the middle. Gonna see Quint and Spoon's gonna putting engagement, so he's more than happy to keep contesting. Rocket pushed up very, very far here. Gonna try to find something. He's gonna find one, two on the spray. Gonna find third. the third, gonna find the fourth. Can he find the fifth? Ace. One more to play. Got the pistol and an ace right up on the start of the round. Rushes up, drops all five off, and the Saints are gonna take. I've been really spotted out or given any info on their position, though. So. Looks like they're setting up for this B hit. And they're already two picks coming out from the Saints. Yeah, a setup it was. They're going to find a third there. Multiple members getting involved. Rocket going to get taken out there. So now we're down to the 4v2. We got RD whipping Domingo. Trying to make some kind of play here. Smoke is going to go through. I believe Amali's going to go through as well. Mig once again going to find that pick. And now all on Domingo with this off. So he is going to get shut down right away. By the only person to stop anything getting ready from the Saints. But they're actually... They're just shift walking it all the way towards oh. oh, hearing Lieber in the back of JBH Rocket. You're here to shoot these out and you find it's really gonna not allow Wayland to get out of the spawn yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, and using that slow can actually set up your Widowmaker pretty nicely because if Emran already has pretty nasty aim, a character moving at half speed is going to be pretty free low for him to get those picks. And we've seen they're finding those early picks on the DPS every single time. Crime going to find that kill onto Waifu there. And now Squeak, once again, just W King with this. Reinhardt taking out everybody left wow. and right, swinging through left and right. Going to find three kills there in the Saints on an absolute tear right now. Now up to Sepias and supports both find picks consistently. Definitely a very good sign for them. So they're going to love this start and they're going to watch this. They're going to watch. Welcome back, everybody. So now we will be into go. Well, whoa, I can't talk. We will be going into draft phase. <laughs> yeah, exciting to see how this draft shakes down. Of course, looking to see what the two teams want to pull out. If we're going to get any sort of fun picks down the pipeline. I hope or so. If we just get, you know, your standard affair of note. Shenandoah going to be starting on the blue side for this draft. Going to be curious to see how this pick ban phase goes. It's really difficult to ban out a team like St. Clair, though. I think yeah. overall it doesn't matter the skill level. It is very difficult to ban out this it team. It is, because Saints started to get, like, such a good variety of different picks. Like, they, they've expanded their champ pool a lot compared to how it was last semester, in my opinion. Like, Ricky, we were seeing him on champs that he did play, like, maybe one or twice last semester but now he's playing them a lot more often maybe some other new champs as well so the first band coming through is zeri i remember zeri being extremely strong i think she did get nerfed though yeah she's pretty we'll have choice words for that afterwards you can't <laughs> say on broadcast zeri's not a very good champion right now has sort of fallen out of favor in the meta considering mm -hmm. a lot of the other things that have risen up yeah. specifically zeri cannot be picked into NASA support. So nope. as we talked about <laughs> earlier some of that coming through but the maokai that's a very expected ban very yeah. strong champion right now in the meta it's absolutely insane. I got the like most triggering clip in one of my games the other day of Malkai just attaching to me from like 50 miles away. Oh, yeah. and I was like, this isn't fair. <laughs> <laughs> we do see the Jax band coming through for Ricky, of course. And then we also have a Sejuani band. Sejuani top has been pretty popular lately running. I believe it was just TP and Ignite. Yeah. And it's a, it's a normal band to see. But we also do have Zoe. Zoe I'm, I'm a little bit curious of because I... I think we've haven't we seen it just once? Yeah, we haven't Saints? seen the Zoe that much out of Saints specifically. We've seen it against them. Was recently played by Fisher College against them, but you can see a lot of bands towards the top side of the map here taken mm -hmm. away by Saint Clair. They just want to give Ricky as much space as possible. And realistically, these are some of the strongest champions in the meta right now. But Amumu going to get first picked here. <sighs> Very likely, we see that built into some sort of combo in the bottom lane. Really yeah. strong at support, not so strong in the jungle. <laughs> We're just not gonna comment on it. <laughs> We're just not gonna comment on it. Granted, it can still be support. It could. Yes. It one hundred percent could. But we'll see. Yeah. And I mean, especially with I'm the... gonna have to have a word with Rocco. I'm sorry for cutting you off, Adam. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to have a word with Rocco, because I was promised. <laughs> but we do see also a Samira picket coming through. Samira and Amu, they actually work pretty well together. So I'm I'm kind of expecting that balling to win, as in like champion wise. But Saints Saints have been having an incredible season, so I yeah. 
I, I'm in favor of Stasis. It's, it's a challenge with this bot lane, especially because it is very Feast or Famine. You go in at level 2, you need to find kills. And especially when you've got the likes of a Kai'Sa potentially Blitzcrank that you're going up against in yeah. that bottom slot. We don't know where that's going yet. We'll have to find out how they're able to actually adapt to that. But of course, the Jarvan going to go through now. A lot of wombo combo potential coming through yeah. from Shenandoah here. They really need to have a look for these team fights because that is how a team that is less favored are going to win some of these games. We look at something like at Worlds with Detonation Focus Me taking a game off of RNG. That goes towards a very comfort playstyle, a very teamfight focused playstyle where you can sort of flip the game off of that mm -hmm. and potentially come out on top. So we do have to try and speed through this draft real quick because we are getting into games. So we got a Yasuo and Vex band on Saint's side and we also have Syndra and Azir band. All expected picks due to both team comps and the patch notes. Then we also have our Renekton pick for... Uh, I, w I don't want to say their college name wrong. Um, and also Singed as well. But then we also have Set and Silas coming through on same side. And honest Ooh. that is a set. Okay. This can either be. I'm 100. I feel like this is going to be a set support and not a Blitz support. But yeah. we'll see. And we do have uh, Ricky on his classic pick, Darius. Yeah. So that is the rundown as fast as possible. Sorry about that, everybody who is watching. We just realized that the timer was going down for the in game part because we were so uh, just in awe for this Blitzcrank jungle. <laughs> Yeah, and obviously uh, very interesting to see the Blitzcrank jungle coming through, Yeah, uh, especially in game one. It's something that normally you'd see kind of saved <laughs> for a little bit later, but the Silas technically could flex down there. That's a shout out to my voice sprinkler, of course. Mm -hmm. Uwata, the special from there, but uh, very likely Silas goes into that mid lane. Interesting to find out where these two uh, solo laners go. You know, the Re Renekton and the Singe technically interchangeable, especially yeah. with the new changes that have come through uh, in sure. terms of JoJo just playing at mid lane and Champions queue a lot. I'll be very curious to see how that one turns out, but we should be headed on to the rift here for game number one between Shenandoah University versus St. Clair College. Yay! Here nice we go. action here and uh, already a little bit of an invade. This is sort of the the extra bonus you get when you have a Blitzcrank jungle. You can go for an invade oh, like no. this. Already going in onto Hope. Forces the flash out from that Singe and already this is looking a little bit worse. For That's already a summoner burn to make it into this game by the side of St. Clair. <laughs> this is already going to be, again, uh, just as you said, one of those games. But it's all right. Like, Saints have just had such an incredible season. They have made their roster like so close to perfection at this point. I'm really proud for how much our boys have come along. But it is kind of funny that they predicted like, all right, Singe is going to go and try and invade top lane in order to um, proxy the wave top and make sure that the minions can't reach the wave. But I guess I guess that's not happening anymore, bro. I don't know what to I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. But we do see um, their Jarvan invading on Saints blue side in order to take a little bit off of their camp. Maybe force a vertical jungle here. Yeah, possibly vertical jungling. I mean, the biggest thing to keep in mind as well is the fact that Blitzcrank's clear isn't going to be the best. No. It's still kind of oh bad God. because you're really relying <laughs> on auto attacks, but already trapping them in the river of note. You're going to have Fresh actually playing support today on this set. So a little bit of a change up coming through in the roster. Rafa not going to be playing this one out, but that's okay because that's the power of having so many talented players on the side of St. Clair. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what Saints have to offer for this game. Ricky, of course, on Darius. I feel like <laughs> we're either going to see just Ricky pop off like there is no tomorrow, or we will see someone else pop off here. Who knows? But honestly, I'm going to say Seth's support is kind of like a secret hidden favorite of mine. Because my friend's a set main and he refuses to play any other champions, and he goes bot lane to troll me. Yeah, but level two already going through face breaker. Lots of damage on the Chabella. This is sort of taking away the power that the Samira Amumu lane has. Look at all the damage Rockboom's able to put down on this Kaisa and Amumu. You know, still level one down to 100 HP. Not really the best of situations. But as we can see across the map, just St. Clair starting to take it that early landing lead. Nothing too crazy coming through quite yet, apart from the vertical jungling that we were talking about. But you can see Jarvan moving down to the bottom side of the map. And in that mid lane as well, we'll have to see if Etherealist is able to find anything. Just seems to go back into their own jungle. They don't want to push the envelope too much. Crank though, walking into that mid lane. Here oh comes God. the gank. Alonzo looking for it. Abscond of Duck comes through. First blood for Blitzcrank jungle. Alonzo showing that, hey, even as a jungler, they can hit that hook. See, Blitzcrank jungle sounded like such a meme to not only like us as casters, to the entire broadcaster room, but even the teams when I was talking to them, I was like, nah, like you're telling me you're going to pick it? <laughs> I'm not listening to you. Like I was 50-50 on it, but... Look at, look at where we are now. <laughs> it, it is a strong pick. It's very gank oriented. You really want to look for that as uh, no. Creighton goes down on that bottom side. Rockboom able to find that kill under tower. Uh, Listen, Rocco, you don't have to do the poor man like that. 
You didn't have to bring cleanse. You did not have to do him like that, okay? We do see... Oh, what had happened? Mid lane... Oh my goodness, yeah. Was J4 seeing... was down to like double digit HP. Yeah, looks like it was a little bit of an invade there from the Silas looking for the kill. Uh, no flash burn by the side of Etherealist here, but on the flip side, no breaker. Will be uh, able to drop that ignite down. Just do a little bit of chip damage and really just force this Jarvan out. Prevent them from really completing the sort of vertical jungling strat. Yeah. Of note, it means that Alonzo could potentially look to pick up both of these scuttle crabs, which is always something. That uh, as NA fans, that's basically the only thing we have to look for at Worlds. Yeah, it's really funny as well because you can just tell Saints is looking for just a bloodbath this game. Oh. Look at Alonzo. That's not fair, man. Just come up behind the other side of the turret to knock up the Sage that then Ricky can pick up a free kill. Was it? Come on. Yeah, and of course, with the changes that have happened uh, to towers and everything, they took away a little power from diving. But as we can see, Fresh taking a healthy chunk of damage from Sincere support in the mid lane there. Not going to be too happy about that one. But of course, that's what you expect when you have a support set versus the Renekton mid lane. Going to be doing a little bit more damage on that side. But yes, already we can see 2,000 gold lead erupting for the side of St. Clair. I'm really curious to see what uh, Fresh chooses to build on set here because I know that he has have a couple of different builds that he could go. Um, his he, his rune is Conqueror, so I am expecting the Divine um, Mythic item out of him, but who knows? We might yeah. be in for a little surprise. I mean, again, we do have a Blitzcrank jungle, so who knows the Saints right now? Yeah, a Blitzcrank jungle who built a dark seal for the record, so no! uh, make this known that this isn't your tank, Blitzcrank. Uh, also taking the lethal tempo. We're going to see Nashor's Tooth come through, but Toebreaker coming through that mid lane, taking a lot of damage, actually will be replied to by Atherealist. Goes one for one there. Great timing from the Shenandoah jungle to be there at the right time. Great trade as well. It's not like, it's, it's obviously like not the um, most prioritized thing that you go for, but it's... It's a kill for them. It's a way to get on the scoreboard. It's a way to get some gold into your little pocket there. So we'll see. Oh no, no. Darius is, or <laughs> Ricky's gonna pop the ghost in here, and he is going to pull the synth in. We'll see if he can pick up the kill here. Oh my <laughs> oh god! Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's a lot of damage coming through from Ricky there. Ricky! <laughs> the passive on Darius gives you so much AD, especially in that early game, and hope really no chance in the world to survive that one. You know, no defensive items built up quite yet, and the uh, the synth is just gonna be. Uh, worse for wear in that situation. That's the power of Darius, though, in lane. Completely mm -hmm. expected in this match, especially considering the Synergy wasn't level 6 yet to get all those bonus stats underway. But as we can see right now, 3,000 gold lead continuing to mount up here for St. Clair. They're look constantly Alonzo. looking for this. Look at, him. Just look at this wave just control look at him. as well. Yeah, Alonzo going to be coming through. That's Space Groove Blitz and Crank for the record. Going to be looking <laughs> for the pull onto someone. Oh, going to be blocked out by that Blade World at Toebreaker coming through. The steal on that ultimate. Four people down to this wards, this bottom side. This is what happens when your lanes are this strong. You can consistently shove in. You can look for these roams to really punish this bot side of the map. And Samir is a champion that doesn't really like if she falls behind. Chabella going to be forced to flash out at that one, but there's no escaping this one. Alonzo with all of that attack oh speed, just chunking them out. This wave is going to be completely neutered away. Toebreaker, though, looking for a little bit more in that mid lane. But since your support going to drop that, Dominus going to keep everything squared away. Now, honestly, like, I i wasn't expecting that much aggression out of Saints, but also, like, they do know that this game is a simple win in their pocket. Um, so it's not too, like, there's not much to say about it. it. There's just fights here and there, fights going on on top, which, honestly, I noticed that Saints didn't bring TP. He brought uh, Ghost and Flash, yep. which was a little bit interesting for me to see. Yeah. I know that he does normally bring TP so that then he can uh, set up games all around the map. Saints, I believe, are going to pick up first turret bot lane from the looks of it. Or at least, oh, oh my yeah. god. They're, they're looking poised to do so, but Fresh taking a lot of damage. Oh, big face breaker onto two people. Going to be dodged away from great Ooh. flashback with that Haymaker, but Fresh may be the next victim if there's enough damage coming through from Ethereal. It does seem to be the case, but this dive going absolutely the way of St. Clair's. Meanwhile, in the mid lane here, Toebreaker looking for a little bit more damage, waiting on those cooldowns, but since your support has no way out, Kingslayer going to cut down on the Crocodile, turn him into a pair of shoes. It's going to be a <laughs> A four for one across the map in favor of St. Clair. Beautiful kills all across the map, as Adam said. A great double for Rocco to pick up, so now he is 3-0. Has a little gold bounty there, so he should be prioritizing that as much as possible. He did pick up a um, Serena Dirk in the meantime, which I've seen a lot. Oh. Oh, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> That's the first item collector. 
this is abuse. <laughs> okay, now, we're trying to keep it as, as you know, s square as possible, but that's... Uh, this is a repeat of the Overwatch 2 game. This is a little bit intense at that Tobrek are going in with that Cataclysm. At the Realist, no chance to get out of that one alive. Already use the Flag and Drag to go towards those Wolves, and now the Silence 3, 1-1 one one after Holland in that mid lane gank gets their revenge as they take away those Wolves as well, but as you can see, Fresh just sort of roaming around the map looking for any opportunity possible since your support is going to be able to get out of that one squared away, but down on this bot side, Rock Boom knows that they've got the advantage, looking for as much damage as possible. Let's see if they go in for this one. Creighton has no way to survive this. Oh the Killer Instinct God. forward going to be able to find it. Will they be able to find the kill onto the Amumu? My goodness, what a play from Rock Boom. Just cutting Beautiful. both of those down in the 1v2. If it's possible, I would love to see a replay of that. But great play from Rocco. Tobreaker here is going to fight the Renekton. He's going to go a little bit too low, but he does pick up the kill in the end with the Ignite. And now they're just like, yeah, taking drag, and they're 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 chilling. They're not really caring. Yeah, they're they're feeling really good about it. Oh, I don't no. even know what to say. Blitzcrank soloing this dragon effectively is really funny, but it is something that can now happen because yeah. the static field will consistently proc. This I believe was one of the changes that happened uh, on the patches where it just will continue going down. It used to yeah. only stack up to three times, but now it stacks infinitely. So there is a clip of Vanderl, I think it was, uh, playing Blitzcrank with full attack speed, auto autoing down a Cho'Gath, and literally killing the Cho'Gath after autoing them for like a couple of minutes uh, of note. Yeah, that's a lot of summoner spells burned on the top side of the map. Yeah. Hope wants nothing to do with the Darius. No. Okay, look at Ricky right now. Would you want to do it? Would you no. want to try and fight no. him? Exactly. It's it's a rough situation. Leave my boy here. singed alone. Yeah. It's 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 a rough <laughs> situation here. You know, eight thousand gold lead at ten minutes. We really need to try and find any sort of ray of hope here for this side of Shenandoah. And I think in a lot of ways, once you get to an actual five v five team fight, you do have some tools to be able to accomplish that. You've yeah. got the Samumu ultimate. You've got the Samira ultimate now online. If you can put everything together and find a couple of these shutdowns, that puts a little bit more gold into your pocket. <laughs> Sincere support, you do not want to laugh in front of Toebreaker, though. That's what I would advise yeah, against in this was, situation. That's what I was just giggling about. There was a little VM there in the mid lane, so now Toebreaker oh, has to go. Their next one, what's up? He is going to go oh. in for the dive. Stun, Q, and Renekton is just gone. Back oh. the map. is going to land the hook on the Singe there and also pick up a kill for himself. Now we're over to bot lane. We just saw how Rocco did manage to 1v2 both the Samira and Amumu, so who knows what's going to happen now. But Saints overall doing an amazing job, and I can't wait to see what comes up next. Yeah. Uh, Fresh does Hextech flash in, and Mumu's uh, ulti does come through. Looks like Fresh Goodness. might make it out. Mm, no. J uh, J4 does pick up the kill. Rocco oh picked up one kill. Looks like he's going to pick up another with his Q on Jarvan, and he gets a triple kill by the end of it. So maybe it was a good... The Jinx emote. Yeah, drops the JC mode just for you, playing Kaisa of all people. But of course, Rocco just having it the time of his life this time around. Collector first item, not recommended for solo queue, but especially when you know you are as strong for as you sure. are, when you're as confident in the situation. Hey, I mean, it gives you that execute potential. Everyone's got 95% health effectively, and Rock Boom just starting to run away with this game. 8 0 and 1. Double the CS of Creighton on the opposite side of the map. Rock Boom really showing why they're one of the prized off season acquisitions of the Saints team. Yeah, the, like, again, there's a lot of things that are going on in this game where it's just like, oh, okay, we can have a little bit of fun with it, but um, Saints do respect all the players in this game. But we do see Ricky going in again on the Singe Bye. and just, goodbye, Singe, we'll miss you. Yeah. Looks, uh, <laughs> can be deceiving. You know, Ricky only 3-0 and 1, but also has only really had hope in their lane to deal yeah. with and has at second tower are gonna go down. Of note, I believe that is 14 plates now collected by the side of St. Clair. So at the very least, going for this sort of completionist win condition here. Mm -hmm. Gonna try and get as much as possible, build this up as much as possible, and really just put on a show as well for us here, showing why they are such a feared team. Showing that, you know, we very beat true. Fisher College, one of the best teams. We can also show up in these sort of games and play our style and still show give people a good show at that. For sure. That was one of the points that I tried to make earlier is that St. Clair has created such an amazing roster this year that they're able to pull off things like this. And they're, they want to show off. They want to show all their accomplishments this year. And they've been doing great so far and they completely deserve it. And I can't wait to see what they have next. J4 is hiding around the wolf. Uh, camp in order to try and see if he can get a pick on Rocco, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen for today. Fresh is walking over to bot lane, possibly to pick up some kills. Oh, he might be going on the, on and on the Samira oh. here. I think he is. Okay, yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, Creighton gonna be in trouble. Of note, this is building towards the Gordrink run set, just sort of the 
I do damage, so I'm going to keep doing it here. Mathematically correct. Fresh taking a lot of damage. They'll force the flash out. Rock Boom getting a kill for themselves in the mid lane. Curse of the Sad Mummy comes down, but there's no follow-up coming through from Creighton. Now, Ricky is here flashing forward, pulling back the Samira as well. Fresh actually going to go down as well, but it does not matter. Ricky Leffler goes into, into the dunk competition, looking like Blake Griffin finding two of them in a row there. That's 5-0 and 1 for the Darius. So... I just want to look at the scoreboard real quick. So we got 5-0-1 for Ricky. We got Alonzo at 2-0-4. Two, two, oh, we have uh, Tobruk here at 5-1. And, and then Rocco at 10-0. and oh. Yeah. And Fresh at 1-3. and three. Fresh is just taking them for the team. You know what he's saying? I will die it for the better cause. You've always got to have that person on your team. Yeah. Better that it's the support, if anything, just because you know, they're, they're not going to get as many resources here. Of course, Toebreaker on this top side. No mana. Not really a chance to outplay this one. We'll see if they're able to stay alive for as long as possible. Ignite kicking down here from Sincere Support. Toebreaker is going to have to find a miracle to get out of this one. Yeah, Will be the shutdown going back over to that Renekton. That's a lot of gold. A thousand gold in the pockets of that Renekton. We'll see if that can maybe make a difference in this game. Very, very well played by the Renekton in the J4 there in order to pick up that small little kill just to get some gold in their pockets once again. We do see the gold difference at the top, and I believe it says around 16k difference between the two. Um, Alonso's just around the corner. He just... <laughs> Look how much attack speed this looks going <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> it, it, it looks really oh no, silly out oh that. No. But, uh, Chabella walking up into the jungle. This is not your zone. Getting pulled back by the Blitzcrank. Alonzo going to town. Boom, 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 boom. As Fresh finishes that one off with the big ol' haymaker. The, like, the attack speed that we just saw Blitzcrank, that scared me a little bit. Like, I, I fought against it in my ranked games. It wasn't too bad. Like, I was able to deal with it, but I didn't know it was like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of an interesting one where... Uh, hey, all of a sudden, this robot who is technically built for fighting, as we were talking about, they wanted to move him towards a fighter champion, mm -hmm. is doing their job and fighting them. Not really just a hook bot that you've seen a lot of these blitz tanks come into. Yeah. Interesting to see the build coming through is the turbo chem tank, not going for that Nashor's Tooth first item. Honestly, at this point, they can build anything they want with how yeah, far ahead they true. are. It's a little bit of an unfortunate situation for Shenandoah, but of course, even face checking into these bushes, this are avoidable oh attempts that the realist tries to get over the wall with the flag and drag, but the hook is clean. Won't end up amounting to too much quite yet, but the pullback from Ricky LaFleur would be a good situation. It's a 2v5. They are actually Ricky going to be taken down, and these are the situations where you've got to be careful because Shenandoah capitalize and pick up another thousand gold shut down. They have so much CC on their team that, yeah, Saints do want to be a little bit aggressive and have those uh, funny kills, but you honestly can't do to all that CC. Rocco is going to go here in, on here on the Renekton is going to pick up another kill. We do see a hex flash over the wall up in top lane for Fresh, and a J4 ulti comes down. Oh, Toebreaker picks up one kill. Can he pick up another? We'll see. Singe does end up finishing oh Toebreaker off, but it doesn't matter. Rocco and Fresh are able to pick up the rest of the team, except for that lonely little Singe running back to base. It's okay. He's gonna be. He's gonna have some friends soon. Yeah. You know what? He's running back to season two of Arcane because he survived out of all of that. So why? <laughs> regardless here I just heard I saw the flash oh my goodness Arcane Season 2 is coming soon but uh, regardless here Inhibitor might be taken down or just the Inhibitor chart for the time being here at 17 minutes St. Clair having a little bit of fun with their food at the same time here you know yeah. looking for some of these fights and while they do give over some shutdowns here the gold lead still stands here almost up to 20,000 gold here at 17 minutes definitely showing that they are a cut above the rest and just really showing that this is a team that needs to be feared not only at this NACE level, not only at NACC, yep. but for the entire league once we get into the CLL season as well. I'm, I, like, all, like, they've just been playing great, and I can't wait to see uh, how far they make it in CLL, actually. I'm not sure when that exactly that is coming up, but it should be sometime soon. But again, they are just, they want to prove their dominance in all these leagues, and they 100% are. Ricky is going to come around the corner here, take the Raptors camp from the poor team. Yeah. Get a couple of them, you know. Ethereal is still able to get a little bit though. more. But yeah, you look at the CS differences across the board, and it, it really shows how dominant this game has been from St. Clair mm -hmm. and why they are so feared by a lot of schools at this point. You know, this is this is a team that has sort of come around, has shown up when yeah. it matters the most. And, you know, even though we're early on to the season, there's still so much time to grow, and it's really, really nice to be able to see this team grow into their own as well. Of course, For sure. there's the components of that Nasher's Tooth that we were talking about. Alonzo knows what's up in the jungle there, trying to just beat down on someone as quickly yeah. as possible. But across the board, even Rock Boom, if we can switch over to the gold, we'll actually see how much gold they're sitting. Oh, there, there we go. We figured oh, it out. No. Infinity Edge fully complete. They were sitting on 4,500 gold at that point. Uh, there's a gold coming oh. up right now, so now we can oh. see. Oh! Holy! <laughs> Fresh gets a kill of their own onto Ethereal in the 1v2 as well. 
you know, even the support started to show up at that, but yeah, it's it's a little bit rough to look at that gold graph there. It is oh, very yeah. substantial in 100%. favor of St. Clair. And, you know, Rock Boom showed that there by just showing that, uh, you know, even at this stage of the game, <laughs> they are as hot as possible. Tobreaker, though, stealing away the immovable, oh getting God. four people into that. Gonna find one in the 1v4 situation. Alonzo, though, gonna be slowed up here by Hope. This is a situation where you don't want to be in. Alonzo getting the stack field on the three members, but Creighton's able to stay alive. It's another shutdown going the way of Shenandoah. Meanwhile, Fresh, the support, is split pushing, doing their best to saying impression without the int and that one there. Fresh still looking for more damage, not feeling too scared of Ethrealist here. Two levels up on the enemy jungler here. The support is the same level as the solo lanes on the opposite side. Fresh just sort of tanking up as much damage as possible. Sincere support needs to pop that dominance as quickly as possible. Ricky Lafleur is watching, making sure everything goes, says, hey, I will only step in if necessary. Is absolutely not necessary as Rockboom picks up a third for themselves. 16-0 and 1, <laughs> trying to do the most in this game as they take an inhibitor here at 19 and a half minutes. I didn't even realize that Rocco was sitting around the corner there. I was just like, here, or not Rocco, sorry, Ricky. I just saw Rocco come around the corner and I was like, yep. Easy. <laughs> Four <laughs> kills. <laughs> at, at this point, they're just sort of filling the stat sheet at this, of course, in the base. Mm -hmm. 20,000 gold lead, despite all the shutdowns going the opposite way. Seems yeah. like they will be held off until the past 20 minutes, but Rock Boom started doing that thing, <laughs> telling his whole team, hey, stay back. I got this. I got this, guys. Don't worry about I me. I want the Penta. I, I want the 1v5 Penta. Get I want to start farming the clips at that point, but... Nonetheless, you know, very fat and, you know, with the amount of gold that they just picked up and what we've seen them go through, I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to reset. I think they're just going to keep fighting and then back and buy a full other item. It's three yeah. and a half items at, you know, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. For sure. And somewhat abnormal in terms of game states. There was one thing that we did miss when we were looking at the gold graphs. Fresh has more gold than all of the yeah. enemy teams combined. Or not combined, but it's all it's of the a little bit team. of a cook madame at that. There's sandwich that has the egg on top or whatever. You basically got all the Saints players on top. Then yeah. you've got the rest. I mean, of all of them, it's actually Alonzo who's the closest to falling behind there of the Renekton. Mm -hmm. But Renekton picked up two thousand gold shutdowns at that. So That's also true. That ends up paying a lot of the bills at that, but unfortunately the bills aren't going to pay themselves here for Shenandoah. It seems like they're just trying to find anything they can, but it's a slow bleed that's also a fast bleed mm -hmm. and is also very bloody. <laughs> it's it's going down. Yeah, that's it's all you can really say in, in these types of games. Um, but Tobruk does want to go in and wants to pick up one of those kills really bad. You can just tell by how aggressive he's playing here. Uh, Jerry Ford tries to go in, but isn't able to, to get any CC off on him. So yep. they are able to walk out with no issue. Lonzo, he's looking for that hook over the wall, man. Oh, yeah. Also, of note, uh, Silas stole away the Sinister Ultimate like 20 seconds ago. Now has the Amumu Ultimate. That's going to oh be a pull back as Rock Boom finds another one going under the Rock tower, go. going forward as aggressively as possible. Flashing forward. That's a double kill picked up. Rock Boom looking for more, saying, boys, this is my show. This is my time to shine. Another triple kill picked up by the Kaisa. 19 0 and 1 has half the kills on the team. Saying, it isn't just Ricky who can get a 21 kill performance Rock and show go. up. Rocco, though, going to have to be really careful. Goes down to Creighton there. Goes, gets a little bit too aggressive. Granted, that was a 100% health Samira versus yeah. a 10. 10% health, Kaisa, and it was close at that, of course. Finishing For off sure. this game, sincere support in the Dominus will be taken down. Everyone will fall. Two ashes there. Alonzo burning down by the Ignite. Not even close, baby. This is going to be a 22-minute victory. Oh, Alonzo goes down. Might not be over quite yet. We'll see. Look we'll at see. Like a 22-minute victory in favor of St. Clair. They just want to fill out the score sheets just a little bit more, but that will be game one in the books. St. Clair taking a very dominant victory. Very, very well done by the Saints. And it was a good match overall. Saints did dominate this game as it was a 42 to 11, but it was a good try from everybody in the lobby. But we do have a second game coming up as it is a best of three, but let's take a little bit of time to just highlight those a uh, couple of those kills last uh, game that we were in. I think that overall we've got a lot to talk about in terms of what St. Clair were able to accomplish. And I think we need yeah. to really highlight how strong they showed up as well. Yes. But also the fact that Shenandoah, they had some good flashes there. And I think that if they're able to hold their lanes a little bit better mm -hmm. and just sort of hold back on some of the aggression that we saw. I mean, Hope was way too far up in that lane a couple of yeah. times there. And that's unfortunately what ended up coming back to haunt them in a sense. But overall, there's still some flashes of brilliance there that I think could push them through yeah, to maybe make sure. it a little bit closer. Um, Definitely the... Uh, Senado's team had a lot of CC. So, I like, just as you said, if they waited for that time to get ahead, like, just not even get ahead of kills or anything, just get wait for the gold to start um, racking up in their um, 
in the shop then they were able to purchase a lot of items that could have saved them the game to be honest because having those amazing cc moments it could it almost changed the games at some times especially when they got all what was that a, a 2000 gold shutdowns yep. overall on renekton that was insane but it does look like we do have a replay up on the screen here um in a few minutes coming right. through um Tobreaker overall did 23k damage. I think that says, yeah, 23k yeah. damage overall. That is absolutely insane. And then also Rocco had double the amount of damage. Yeah, it's just, just so much damage coming through onto everything as well. It was really just a dominant performance as expected. As we said, this is a team, the St. Clair team that really wants to push themselves over the edge and show everyone that they're they're for real this year, and they want yeah. to just show up at that. But of course, we are going to head to a short break, run the replay reel as well for that. But when we're back, we will have game two onto the rift between Shenandoah and St. Clair College. Uh. Yeah, uh, Blitzcrank Jungle, who built a dark seal for the record. So no! uh, make this known that this isn't your tank, Blitzcrank. Uh, also taking the lethal tempo. We're going to see Nashra's Tooth come through, but Toebreaker coming through that mid lane, taking a lot of damage. So we'll see. Oh no, no. Darius is, or <laughs> Ricky's gonna pop the ghost in here, and he is going to pull the synth in. Oh, we'll see if he can pick up the kill from the looks of it, or at least. Oh, oh my no. God. They're, they're looking poised to do so, but Fresh taking a lot of damage. Oh, big face breaker onto two people. Gonna be dodged away from great Ooh. flashback with that haymaker, but Fresh may be the next victim if there's enough damage coming through from Ethereal. It does seem to be the case, but this dive going puts a little bit more gold into your pocket. <laughs> Sincere support, you do not want to laugh in front of Toebreaker, though. That's what I would advise yeah, against in this was, situation. That's what I was just giggling about. There was a little BM there in the mid lane, so now Toebreaker oh, has to go. They're next to what's up. He is going to go. Oh. We'll to see what comes up next. Yeah. Uh, Fresh does Hextech flash in, and Mumo's uh, ulti does come through. Looks like Fresh oh, might make it out. Mm, no. Jar uh, J4 does pick up the kill. Rocco oh, picked up one kill. Looks like he's going to pick up another with his Q on Jarvan. And a Creighton going to be in trouble. Of note, this is building towards the Gore Drink run set. Just sort of the, I do damage, so I'm going to keep doing it here. Mathematically correct. Fresh taking a lot of damage. They'll force the flash Whoa. out. Rock Boom getting a kill for themselves in the mid lane. Curse of the Sad Mummy comes down, but there's no follow up coming through from Creighton. Now, Ricky is here flashing forward, pulling back the Samira as well. Fresh actually going to go down as well, but it does not matter. Ricky LaFleur goes into, into the dunk competition for Shenandoah, but of course, even face checking into these bushes. This are avoidable oh attempts. God. Etherealist tries to get over the wall with the flag and drag, but the hook is clean. Won't end up amounting to too much quite yet, but the pullback from Ricky LaFleur would be a good situation. It's a 2v5. They are actually Ricky going to be taken down, and these are the situations where you've got to be- All up in top lane for Fresh, and a J4 ulti comes down. Oh, my. Cobreaker picks up one kill. Can he pick up another? We'll see. Singe does end up finishing oh Cobreaker off, but it doesn't matter. Rocco and Fresh are able to pick up the rest of the team, except for that lonely little Singe running back to base. It's okay. By just showing that, uh, you know, even at this stage of the game, they are as hot as possible. Tobreaker, though, stealing away the immovable, oh getting God. four people into that. Gonna find one in the 1v4 situation. Alonzo, though, gonna be slowed up here by Hope. This is a situation where you don't want to be in. Alonzo getting the stack field on the three members. But and Anne wants to pick up one of those kills really bad. You can just tell by how aggressive he's playing here. Uh, Jerry Ford tries to go in, but isn't able to get any CC off on him. So they are able to walk out with no issue. Lonzo, he's looking for that hook over the wall, man. Oh, yeah. Also, of note, uh, Silas stole away the Sinister ultimate like 20 seconds ago. Now has the Amumu ultimate. That's going to oh be a pull back as Rock Boom finds another one going under the Rock tower, go. going forward as aggressively as possible. Flashing forward. That's a double kill picked up. Rock Boom looking for more. Saiyan Buzz can down. Everyone will fall. Two ashes there. Alonzo burning down by the Ignite. Not even close, baby. This is going to be a 22 minute victory. Oh, Alonzo goes down. Might not be over quite yet. We'll see. Look we'll at see. Like a 22 minute victory in favor of St. Clair. They just want to fill out the score sheets just a little bit more. But that will be game one in the books. St. Clair taking a very dominant victory. Very, very well done by the Saints. And it was a good match overall. Saints did dominate this game as it was a uh, 42 to 11 Saints right now. Yeah, uh, Blitzcrank Jungle who built a dark seal for the record. So no. uh, make this known that this isn't your tank, Blitzcrank. Uh, also taking the lethal tempo. We're going to see Nashra's Tooth come through, but Toebreaker coming through that mid lane, taking a lot of damage. So we'll see. Oh no, Darius is, or <laughs> Ricky's going to pop the ghost in here and he is going to pull the synth in. We'll see if he can pick up the kill from the looks of it. Or at least, oh, oh my no. god. They're, they're looking poised to do so, but Fresh taking a lot of damage. Oh, big face breaker onto two people. Going to be dodged away from Ooh. great flashback with that haymaker, but Fresh may be the next victim if there's enough damage coming through from Ethereal. It does seem to be the case, but this dive going puts a little bit more gold into your pocket. <laughs> Sincere support, you do not want to laugh in front of Toebreaker, though. That's what I would advise yeah, against in this that's, situation. That's what I was just giggling about. There was a little BM there in the mid lane, so now Toebreaker oh, has to go. Goodness. They're next to what's up. He is going to go. Oh. We'll see what comes up next. 
Yeah. Uh, Fresh does Hexec Flash and Amumu's uh, ulti does come through. Looks like Fresh oh, might make it out. Mm, no. Jar uh, J4 does pick up the kill. Rocco picked up one kill. Looks like he's going to pick up another with his Q on Jarvan. And a Creighton going to be in trouble. Of note, this is building towards the Gore Drinker on set. Just sort of the, I do damage, so I'm going to keep doing it here. Mathematically correct. Fresh taking a lot of damage. They'll force the flash Whoa. out. Rock Boom getting a kill for themselves in the mid lane. Curse of the Sad Mummy comes down, but there's no follow up coming through from Creighton. Now, Ricky is here flashing forward. Pulling back the Samira as well. Fresh actually going to go down as well, but it does not matter. Ricky LaFleur goes into, into the dunk competent for Shenandoah, but of course, even face checking into these bushes. This are avoidable oh attempts. God. Etherealist tries to get over the wall with the flag and drag, but the hook is clean. Won't end up amounting to too much quite yet, but the pullback from Ricky LaFleur would be a good situation. It's a 2v5. They are actually Ricky going to be taken down, and these are the situations where you've got to be- All up in top lane for Fresh, and a J4 ulti comes down. Oh, my. Codebreaker picks up one kill. Can he pick up another? We'll see. Singe does end up finishing oh Codebreaker goodness. off, but it doesn't matter. Rocco and Fresh are able to pick up the rest of the team, except for that lonely little Singe running back to base. It's okay. Here by just showing that, uh, you know, even at this stage of the game, th they are as hot as possible. Toebreaker, though, stealing away the immovable, oh getting God. four people into that. Gonna find one in the 1v4 situation. Alonzo, though, gonna be slowed up here by Hope. This is a situation where you don't want to be in. Alonzo getting the stack field on the three members. But when N wants to pick up one of those kills really bad. You can just tell by how aggressive he's playing here. Uh, Jerry Ford tries to go in, but isn't able to get any CC off on him, so they are able to walk out with no issue. Lonzo, he's looking for that hook over the wall, man. Oh yeah, also of note, uh, Silas stole away the Sinister ultimate like 20 seconds ago, now has the Amumu ultimate, that's gonna oh be a pull back as Rock Boom finds another one, going under the Rock tower, go. going forward as aggressively as possible, flashing forward, that's a double kill picked up, Rock Boom looking for more, saying boys can down, everyone will fall. Two ashes there, Alonzo burning down by the Ignite, not even close, baby. This is gonna be a 22 minute victory. Oh, Alonzo goes down, might not be over quite yet. We'll see, Look we'll at see. Like a 22 minute victory in favor of St. Clair. They just wanna fill out the score sheets just a little bit more, but that will be game one in the books. St. Clair taking a very dominant victory. Very, very well done by the Saints, and it was a good match overall. Saints did dominate this game as it was a 42 to 11 with Saints right now. Yeah, uh, Blitzcrank Jungle, who built a Dark Seal for the record, so no! uh, make this known that this isn't your tank, Blitzcrank. Uh, also taking the lethal tempo. We're going to see Nashra's Tooth come through, but Toebreaker coming through that mid lane, taking a lot of dip. So we'll see. Oh, no. Darius is, or <laughs> Ricky's going to pop the ghost in here, and he is going to pull the synth in. We'll see if he can pick up the kill. From the looks of it, or at least, oh, oh my yeah. god. They're, they're looking poised to do so, but Fresh taking a lot of damage. Oh, big face breaker onto two people. Going to be dodged away from Ooh. great flashback with that Haymaker, but Fresh Maybe the next victim if there's enough damage coming through from Ethereal. It does seem to be the case, but this dive going puts a little bit more gold into your pocket. <laughs> Sincere support, you do not want to laugh in front of Toebreaker, though. That's what I would advise yeah, against in this was, situation. That's what I was just giggling about. There was a little BM there in the mid lane, so now Toebreaker oh, has to go. They're next to what's up. He is going to go. Oh. Let's we'll see what comes up next. Yeah. Uh, Fresh does Hextech Flash, and Amumu's uh, ulti does come through. Looks like Fresh oh, might make it out. Mm, no. Jar uh, J4 does pick up the kill. Rocco picked up one kill. Looks like he's going to pick up another with his Q on Jarvan. And a Creighton going to be in trouble. Of note, this is building towards the Gore Drinker on set. Just sort of the, I do damage, so I'm going to keep doing it here. Mathematically correct. Fresh taking a lot of damage. They'll force the flash Whoa. out. Rock Boom getting a kill for themselves in the mid lane. Curse of the Sad Mummy comes down, but there's no follow up coming through from Creighton. Now, Ricky is here flashing forward, pulling back the Samira as well. Fresh actually going to go down as well, but it does not matter. Ricky LaFleur goes into, into the dunk competent for Shenandoah, but of course, even face checking into these bushes. This are avoidable oh attempts. God. Etherealist tries to get over the wall with the flag and drag, but the hook is clean. Won't end up amounting to too much quite yet, but the pullback from Ricky LaFleur would be a good situation. It's a 2v5. They are actually Ricky going to be taken down, and these are the situations where you've got to be- All up in top lane for Fresh, and a J4 ulti comes down. Oh my. Codebreaker picks up one kill. Can he pick up another? We'll see. Singe does end up finishing oh Codebreaker goodness. off, but it doesn't matter. Rocco and Fresh are able to pick up the rest of the team, except for that lonely little Singe running back to base. It's okay. Here by just showing that, uh, you know, even at this stage of the game, they are as hot as possible. Toebreaker, though, stealing away the immovable, oh getting God. four people into that. Gonna find one in the 1v4 situation. Alonzo, though, gonna be slowed up here by Hope. This is a situation where you don't want to be in. Alonzo getting the stack field on the three members. But when N wants to pick up one of those kills really bad, you can just tell by how aggressive he's playing here. Uh, Jerry Ford tries to go in, but isn't able to get any CC off on him, so yeah. they are able to walk out with no issue. Lonzo, he's looking for that hook over the wall, man. Oh, yeah. Also, of note, 
Uh, Silas stole away the Singed ultimate like 20 seconds ago, now has the Amumu ultimate, that's gonna oh be a pull back. God. Rock Boom finds another one going under the Rock tower, go. going forward as aggressively as possible, flashing forward, that's a double kill picked up. Rock Boom looking for more, Zayn Buzz can down, everyone will fall. Two ashes there, Alonzo burning down by the Ignite, not even close, baby. This is gonna be a 22 minute victory. Oh, Alonzo goes down, might not be over quite yet. We'll see, Look we'll at see. Like a 22 minute victory in favor of St. Clair. They just wanna fill out the score sheets just a little bit more, but that will be game one in the books. St. Clair taking a very dominant victory. Very, very well done by the Saints. And it was a good match overall. Saints did dominate this game as it was a 42 to 11 Saints right now. Yeah, uh, Blitzcrank Jungle who built a Dark Seal for the record. So no. uh, make this known that this isn't your tank, Blitzcrank. Uh, also taking the lethal tempo. We're going to see Nashra's Tooth come through, but Toebreaker coming through that mid lane, taking a lot of damage. So we'll see. Oh, no. Oh. Darius is, or <laughs> Ricky's going to pop the ghost in here, and he is going to pull the synth in. Oh, we'll see if he can pick up the kill from the looks of it. Or at least, oh, oh my yeah. god. They're, they're looking poised to do so, but Fresh taking a lot of damage. Oh, big face break onto two people. Going to be dodged away from great Ooh. flashback with that Haymaker, but Fresh maybe the next victim if there's enough damage coming through from at real estate so those seem to be the case but this dive going puts a little bit more gold into your pocket <laughs> sincere support you do not want to laugh in front of toebreaker though that's what i would advise yeah, against in this I, situation that's what i was just giggling about there was a little bm there in the mid lane so now toebreaker oh, has to go their next one what's up he is going to go oh. we'll to see what comes up next yeah. Uh, Fresh does Hextech Flash and Amumu's uh, ulti does come through it looks like Fresh Goodness. might make it out mm, no uh, J4 does pick up the kill. Rocco picked up one kill. Looks like he's going to pick up another with his Q on Jarvan. And a Creighton going to be in trouble. Of note, this is building towards the Gore Drink run set. Just sort of the. I do damage, so I'm going to keep doing it here. Mathematically correct. Fresh taking a lot of damage. They'll force the flash Whoa. out. Rock Boom getting a kill for themselves in the mid lane. Curse of the Sad Mummy comes down, but there's no follow up coming through from Creighton. Now, Ricky is here flashing forward. Pulling back the Samira as well. Fresh actually going to go down as well, but it does not matter. Ricky Lefler goes into, into the dunk competent for Shenandoah, but of course, even face checking into these bushes. This are avoidable oh attempts. That the realist tries to get over the wall with the flag and drag, but the hook is clean. Won't end up amounting to too much quite yet, but the pullback from Ricky LaFleur would be a good situation. It's a 2v5. They are actually Ricky going to be taken down, and these are the situations where you've got to be... All up in top lane for Fresh, and a J4 ulti comes down. Oh, my. Cobreaker picks up one kill. Can he pick up another? We'll see. Singe does end up finishing oh Cobreaker off, but it doesn't matter. Rocco and Fresh are able to pick up the rest of the team, except for that lonely little Singe running back to base. It's okay. By just showing that, uh, you know, even at this stage of the game, <laughs> they are as hot as possible. Toebreaker though, stealing away the Amumu, oh getting God. four people into that. Gonna find one in the 1v4 situation. Alonzo though, gonna be slowed up here by Hope. This is a situation where you don't want to be in. Alonzo getting the stack field on the three members. But and, and wants to pick up one of those kills really bad. You can just tell by how aggressive he's playing here. Uh, Dirty Ford tries to go in, but isn't able to... And welcome back everyone to the Saints broadcast here after St. Clair takes a dominant game one victory over Shenandoah for Adam yep. alongside Kaylee once again. Very curious to see what the game two draft has in store here because there were some really good things that came out from Shenandoah for sure. in their draft. Yeah, their draft had, did have a lot of CC in order to stop St. Clair in their dominant victory. They did actually have a couple of great plays, especially when they used all... It was a 5v, I believe, 2 um, around... Uh, I want to say mid inhib when uh, Ricky did end up falling and giving his gold over to the other team, but it was a good way of a good way to use a CC and Renekton got a bunch of gold. So maybe if they can just keep the um, keep that going, have a lot of CC on their team, have a little a uh, couple of like quirky picks maybe, and hopefully they can secure a win this round and then we can show another side of Saints next round. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, and I think especially as we get into draft here, there doesn't need to be any change up coming through from the side of St. Clair. They can ban mm -mm. exactly the same things that they did before and still have a very similar result at that. So very curious to see how that all pans out. Of note, first ban here going to be the Sejuani taken off the table as... Yeah, that's not yeah. going to be too much of a surprise. It's really understandable. It's uh, like as much as I do love Saints, it was kind of a troll pick, but I understand it completely and... They did take it out at the end. Citadel wants a true gameplay. They want to see the true Saints yeah. power. And we will give it to them in our best way possible. I'm really excited to see what the team comp is. But we do see a Maokai ban coming through again. And honestly, it's kind of... I'm not sure how to feel about Saints banning meta picks versus Citadel's picks. But we'll see what comes out of it. Yeah. Darius is also banned. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they're basically going to ban the team comp that we had last round. But it's understandable completely. So...
Yeah, I, I don't think I'm too surprised to see these sort of bands coming through from the side of Shenandoah just to sort of take some of those tools away mm -hmm. from what made St. Clair so strong. The Fiora, like, as we said, they're not going to have to change anything on the side of St. Clair. They can pick exactly the same comp that they picked, or they can ban out the same champions as last game and move towards that side, where Shenandoah, they need to take away all of these tools that yeah. got St. Clair that dominant victory, and snowballing champions like the Darius, like the Kai'Sa, like the Blitzcrank in some extents yeah. as well, is one way to do that. But first pick here for St. Clair will be the Callista coming through, and uh, someone's not very happy about that one, but Callista, a very strong champion despite her recent nerfs. We've seen her a lot at Worlds. Don't speak to me. Don't speak to I'll me, I'll speak Sadie. to the camera at that. No! A Ash is the answer, though, gonna come through as... Uh, that generally is seen as a very good pick into the Callista. It stops her movement speed, it stops her attack speed a little bit as well with that. Could be an Ash support, and if it's an Ash support, I'm gonna throw a fit. Okay! <laughs> we have a Karma. We have a Karma. <laughs> yeah. But this lane in general, going to be a pretty good matchup into the Callista, nonetheless. We have a Karma. Yes, we have a Karma. It's possible that it is not Ash support. We do, but we do see the Amuma coming through. Yeah. So, well. I, I'm thinking it's Ash Karma bot lane. That's my immediate thought on that. It's. I'm f I'm hoping. Yeah, we can hope. <laughs> uh, that's that's at least the goal in that. But I mean, on the flip side, the Amuma going to come through. That's going to be who Callista's tossing into the enemy team at that. And the Lee Sin as well to... Bring a little bit of style points in there as well. Always oh, yeah, fun to see to that style. Kind of you always have to have one player on the team just style. Just just for pure entertainment purposes. Of course. But we do have Poppy Jungle as our jungle, maybe? Maybe. Could be I don't know. I I normally see her jungles, that's why I said jungle yeah. instantly. I don't see her top anymore. Yeah, I mean Poppy is a very good matchup into the Lee Sin, mm -hmm. mainly because you've got all these dashes available on the Lee Sin to stop any of that with the steadfast present that are just able to stop anything from going through. So I think that is a really good pickup there as well. Also takes away Amumu's dash, it takes away Callista's dash. There's a lot of dash champions already on the board here, yeah, so Poppy neutering true. that option at that. But Azir Band gonna come down once again from Shenandoah. They wanna try and take those away. Uh, that's personal. Keep going. Go ahead. I'm just going to let it, you know, marinate there for a little bit. The Silas ban can be taken away as well. <laughs> not necessary. So it uh, seems like not going to be available in that mid lane as well. Uh, Silas of Note does have some pretty good ultimates to take already. You know, you've got the Ash ultimate. You've got that Poppy ultimate. You just want to take that away from the table. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to actually steal the Jinx ultimate because Jinx is not going to be in the game. You're just going to rub it in, huh? I am. Is there a reason? I mean, they rubbed it in. They banned it when there's an 80 carries picked on both sides. <sighs> the jokes write themselves. At least everyone. I'm not trying to boost an e-girl. Anyways, so continuing the pick and ban phase, we do have a Scion coming through for Cynodow. Yeah, the Scion yeah. coming through. It's, it's a frontline tank. It gives you some sort of agency in that regard to stay alive in that lane. But of course, we'll have to find out what the answer is coming through from Urki as well. There's a lot of answers that Ooh. can come. The Mordekaiser are going to be that option. You know, you're looking for an AP threat already. That's something that can provide that for you. And still leaves that mid lane pick up for grabs here. Curious to see what they're going to pull through because there's uh, the, the world is their oyster. And this oh. is a pick I don't think either of us are expecting. The Gangplank no. mid lane. I don't remember ever mm. seeing... Ricky play Gangplank, so this is definitely, or it could be Ricky, it could either be him on, be either a Mordekaiser mid or a Gangplank, and I'm not really sure to be honest, but we do also see a twit. That's a, a twitch. twitch. Not sure where that's going, because you've, we, we talked about the fact that it's probably Poppy Jungle, mm -hmm. and Twitch, you know, do you put that down bot lane with this Ash support now, or do we get this Karma going bot lane is a karma mid lane where is everything going at that it's 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 a curious situation to find out exactly where everyone ends up playing out at that so uh we'll have to find out where this twitch ends up wanting to go because it doesn't really fit into this comp all no. that well so the way that i think the comp is gonna go i think it's gonna be a gangplank mid and a mordekaiser top with a mumu support obviously for saints and then for Cynodo, i'm expecting I'm expecting Twitch ADC, Ash support, Karma mid, Scion top, and Poppy jungle. Because that seems more along the lines of what we've been seeing out of like the meta recently. I wouldn't see it going a different way, but we do have oh. the- Welcome Huh? That's a Twitch mid. I have no- Okay, I haven't been playing the game for as long as everybody thinks I have been. I'm not sure if you've played longer than me. Have you ever seen it? I've never seen a Twitch mid. I have seen Twitch mid once and it was when 
you, do you remember when Smite top with the support item was a thing? Yes. That was the last time I saw it where it just roamed around the map and it was an absolute disaster uh, to, to deal with because you never knew where the Twitch was going to go. It was constantly a pain at that. So very curious to see them pull it out here. This is definitely a pick that sort of takes away from the meta and it's something that realistically you can use as a tool to you know bring a little bit of a oh, switch no. up here and catch Shenandoah <laughs> off guard. They're going to do a late invade. Look at them. Ooh. They're walking around that entire way, and they're not going to see it coming. They're not going to see it Rocco, coming. Rocco, I believe, is just going to go Bali in order to get some CS going. I'm oh, really curious to see how this oh, is going to go right They got now. spotted out by the Poppy here. It'll have to be some sort of play coming through. Alonzo almost reads that as well, but the late invade might be working out since your support just going to have to walk that one out and try and provide some sort of support here. But nonetheless, this is just a level one fight here. I'm not oh sure if I like Shandola's chances at this one because of that darkness rising passive coming through. Ricky doing so much damage. Here goes Lee Sin in. It's a smite fight. Bot lane, it's a first blood for Rock Boom as well, but it's going to be sincere support turning what that one around. What happened, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious as to what happened there as well, but look at this, they're continuing the fight. It's a 3v2, but nonetheless, St. Clair continuing to find the kills. It's gonna be the zombie form on that Scion there. Nonetheless, Toebreaker now forced to back off here at the realist, looking for as much damage as possible, is gonna be able to collect that one as well. It's a two for two on the bottom side of the map. What just happened? I have no idea. And look, the Amumu <laughs> is gonna go in again and probably what? pick up another free kill for Rocco. There it is, an extra free kill for Rocco. I wish we got to, oh. what is happening? Alonzo is going to go and flash his mid and just kill with... Okay. You know, it's just going to be one of those games. <laughs> and so, yeah, welcome back to the Saints broadcast. Uh, there are seven kills in two and a half minutes here to open us up. What just happened? Uh, I don't even know. I can't even explain it to you. In all honesty, I can't. Honestly, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. Just a crazy level one play, of course. Bright spot coming through. His Twitch gets first or gets a kill in that and that's really what you're looking for you want to snowball this twitch as much as possible because we all know how strong twitch can be in the late game regardless of where it's placed true that like twitch is because he is mid i'm honestly not expecting him to stay in lane as much i'm expecting him to roam as much as possible in order to pick up the just extra kills possibly extra gold maybe stop uh, alonzo with some of the camps there's a lot of different things that the Twitch mid could do, and I really hope that we do get to see him utilize it as much as possible. Ricky, again, he's just pushing up in top lane, making sure that the Scion can't farm, he can't do anything funny. And Pauline, it, the wave is pushing towards Rocco, but honestly, I think that's good in my opinion, because he's just able to clear it, and um, our support, Mumu, can look for that quirky little stun in order to get a p another free kill and send him off to a killing spree. Yeah, and I think especially here with uh, Fresh dropping down, the angry emote, uh, just sort of saying, hey, I've got this Dark Seal, I can just go roam around the map, a map as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Mumu is definitely a champion that can find some power in roaming around, finding kills elsewhere, basically acting like a second jungler. For and sure. when you've got Alonzo on this Lee Sin, which has so much of that early game presence, we'll have to see them really accelerate this early game as much as possible because of those champions. Lee Sin does fall off, and that's just the characteristic of the champions, so St. Clair are going to have to keep that in mind. But of course, we'll have to see how Shenandoah answer this one. Uh, Alonzo already coming into that mid lane since your support going to be taking a lot of damage. This one's not going to be the easiest to escape from. going to be how did he pick up passive the kill? from... The uh, gangplank picking that one up. Meanwhile, bot lane 2v2 plays once again. Creighton not really going to be able, ooh, actually able to survive the rend, so not going to be able to get that reset from Rock Boom, but going forward is fresh flashing in with that auto attack. More kills going the way of St. Clair. Beautiful plays by St. Clair so far. Uh, the Twitch mid, I feel like he was playing a little bit too aggro there, especially into Gangplank. Gangplank is known at this point to assassinate literally anybody. Of course, he's not in late game phase yet. Okay, Lazo. That was smooth. Okay, we get it. You're fancy? Fancy feet, you know. <laughs> Just showing Great. off a little bit here with as well. I mean, as as we said, you got to get that style point coming through yeah. when you've got something like a Lee Sin in tow and already, you know, starting to find these ganks around the map. You know, help that the invade ended up paying out in three kills for this Lee it Sin. Did. So, I mean, uh, of all things, that's the main thing we can look at about Ricky. And a little bit of trouble here. Realist not really wanting to tempt it. Gets that phase rush proc and just gets out, trying to do as much damage as possible. I believe he doesn't have ulti yet, but we do see oh, Alonzo no. coming around the corner to pick up the free kill on Poppy after the Q it does land. Ricky is going to fight the Sion here a little bit. Ignite is going to come through, and Alonzo and Ricky might dive here. We're not sure. The Q did miss initially, but his another one will be up in a few seconds, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, and of note, Alonzo knowing that the Steadfast Presence isn't there to block it through that kick, 
Gonna have to be careful. This is not the best dive in the world uh -oh. coming through from St. Clair. Lots of damage being taken from both of them. Ricky popping that shield at the last second will no. fall down as Hope gets one on the board. And Alonzo has to run because the Poppy could be coming top at a moment's notice. You've got to be so careful here with these dives, especially with towers doing more damage. True. That is a... At least Ricky didn't have a shutdown for that kill, which does uh, suck a little bit for Cinedo. But I'm going to have to hold off on what I'm saying because Fresh is going to go in to land a stun. Oh, uh, Twitch yeah. apparently picked up the shutdown on Alonzo while we were watching this bot lane fight, and Callista Rocco is just going to pick up another two easy kills down in the bot lane. There's kills everywhere, and it's just, now that, yeah, it's one of those games that it, where it became that there are so many kills that are going on that it's just, we can't get all of them. So we're going to have to try and get the best ones for all the viewers out here tonight. But so far, Saints showing their dominance just like last game. And we'll see where it takes him this time. Alonzo did end up giving his gold to the Twitch, which is honestly unfortunate. And it does look like, from the build alone so far, it's possible that he, his Twitch is either going Borg first or he's going um, Nashor's Tooth. Yeah. He might be going towards that AP build, but of course, Rock Boom and Fresh taking no prisoners at that. Tobrick, you're taking a lot of damage as well in that mid lane. That's the AP Twitch damage coming through already, just a little bit. But with that last little bit of damage, my goodness, Beautiful. Alonzo sliding through there, getting that ward hop. Gonna come through as Rock Boom looks for that last little bit, yanks the spears out. Of all the abilities in the game, I think Callista Rent has to be like the most painful. Oh, yeah, 100%. because imagine, like, first of all, getting stabbed by all these spears and getting them all yanked out of you. That, Hurts. Yeah, like it's in that face. I haven't really seen this Mordecai's ulti in a spectator mode, but it looks really cool. Yeah, as you can <laughs> see, taking him down to Brazil as the cool gets a Chabella looking for the kill, able Ooh, to pick that nice. one up actually. Fresh was just crying there, just holding it was on. He <laughs> as a uh, fresh able to pick one back up in return. You know, even the St. Clair players, they're they're messing with each other at that. Yeah. It's, they do have a little bit of time in order to mess around. They do have a lot of gold in their pocket, so it's not too bad. But again, we are trying our best. Yeah. That's and, how I'll word it. And, and I think especially here when you've got Rock Boom at 6-1-2 six, six, and two after that death under the tower, it's good that you get a little bit more gold back into the side of Shenandoah. It's a 1,000 gold shutdown that you're able to pick up. A little bit unfortunate that it goes the way of the Karma as opposed to the Ash, but really the only person in the area to collect that one up. Not going to be, fe be feeling too bad about that one, but even then, you know, the Karma not going to be the worst target to pick that one up, depending on the build. If this yeah. is going towards Mandate, it puts that online a little bit quicker. If it's Moonstone, if it's uh, Shirelli, as anything along those lines. They be at be each other. <laughs> They're just dancing at each other. Probably. You know, that, that's just what happens at a certain point as Rock Boom. Going in 1v2, once again, look at all those spears, like a pin cushion into Creighton there as they look for more Bella, despite picking up that shutdown last time, Rock Boom picks up the 1v2 double kill on the bottom side. Not the first time we've seen it tonight, might not even be the last. Rocco plays ADC in such a clean and like aggressive way that it almost surprises me every time. Because you don't expect him to win half of these, but he does because he knows that much about each champion and it's, it's good on him. Yeah. But Twitch is going to go in here on the Gangplank. Both flashes are going to come through. Only a couple autos on the gangplank here. Not much is going to come through. Poppy is around the corner, so she might be able to um, push him into the wall to pick up a quick kill, but it doesn't yeah. seem like that will happen. Fresh is awesome. also Ooh. following. Lands the stun on the Twitch in order to stop the chase from going on. Looks like he's just going to have to try and run and save himself, maybe? Oh, nope. yep. That's AP Twitch coming through. The Nashor's Oh, yeah. Team. And they're doing a lot of damage. Speaking of damage, that's a lot of damage coming through from the Gangplank there. Essence Reaver already mm -hmm. in tow. Got a lot going for them. The Scion charging forward, looking for anything onto Ricky LaFleur. But looks like Ricky might be okay here. Throwing him down into the death room once again. Are they going to be able to outplay this one? Oh my goodness, no for way. sure. Ricky LaFleur just doing a little bit too much damage. Hasn't collected it. Oh, that has collected it as the zombie form goes <laughs> there. Alonzo, great kick under the tower, but might not be enough here. Oh no! As Snowbreaker falls once again, since your support starting to collect up a lot of gold here on this Twitch. You gotta be careful. This AP Twitch gonna be a menace in the later game. It's gonna be another kill picked up by the Twitch, and now Fresh gonna be stunned forever. And he misses the Curse of the Sad Mummy as well. An unfortunate ending there, though, for Sincere Support. 
as they flash into the bush just for fun. That's going to be a nice dodge away, actually, to get out of the vision. But still, a lot of kills going back the way since your support. This Twitch is it's really your saving grace in this situation. Yeah, I'm. I the Twitch has been playing exactly as I said earlier, that his goal should be to try and roam as much as possible. And it's been working out really well so far. Rocco is going to try and 1v2 them yet again. He is able to take out the Karma really fast with the Ren. He is going to go for the Ash. We'll see if he's able to pick it up. It doesn't look like that will happen just of yet. Maybe, who knows. If you had a Jinx ulti, you might be able to kill her. Yeah, if Jinx wasn't banned, you know. It's really unfortunate how that champion wasn't able to get through the pick ban phase at that. But as we see here, uh, Kalista 9, 1, and 2. This is a champion that a lot of teams have feared because of the snowball capabilities. And we see even in the 1v2 situations, it's so hard for anyone to stay alive here. But here comes the spray and pray. The rat -a tat tat coming down from Sincere's support. The burn is going to be enough to collect another shutdown here. This Twitch is starting to become a problem despite the gold differential that's come through. This Twitch is starting to collect as Ricky... Yep. In a little bit of a spicy situation here as well. Going to be trying to escape this one. Atherial is flashing forward. That's going to be a kill picked up by the Poppy on to the top laner from St. Clair. Toebreaker looking for anything that they can. But in a 1v2 situation and not as strong as you'd expect the Gangplank to be, might not actually fancy their chances at this one. Barrel going to be popped as well. Meanwhile, bot side, Alonzo looking for the nice. fight. Will collect that onto Sincere support as well. Here comes Fresh up on the top side to provide a little bit more support. Hope going to go down as well as despite the odd man advantage there for Shenandoah, they end up falling with Hope on the top side. If possible, I would love to take a look at the gold difference in between each player. Here it is. So we do see that Twitch, he has a ton of gold in his pocket. He is ahead of Toebreaker here by quite a bit. Ahead of everyone except for Alonzo here. Actually. Yeah. Very impressive by the Twitch. Um, hopefully he's able to pull everything together and win this game for his team so that we can have a spicy game three. Scion ulti is going to come through. Oh so is Fresh is... Um, Curse of the Sad Mummy, but nothing is going to happen oh, for no. the Saints, and both Saints players are going to fall to Sinado. Yeah, Shenandoah going to be able to capitalize on that. Good Ash ultimate coming through to yeah. land onto that Amumu. Uh, Fresh trying to do the no-move tactic. Didn't work out quite as well, but Ricky now in a 1v3 situation. Actually takes down Creighton into the Death Realm. Will be able to collect one. Now you got to fancy no, your chance with the extra gold in their pocket. The extra stats in their pocket as Rockboom goes down. Bot lane once again to Sincere support. Fighting more important in the mid lane, it seems, as we see. Going to be a little bit of a tough situation for Sincere support as Alonzo collects their 10th kill of the game. <laughs> but Ricky LaFleur continues to perform, picks up a double kill in the 1v3, and that's just the Mordekaiser showing their power with that Darkness Rising passive. It's both Mordekaiser and Ricky just yes. showing, even though he is 0-3 at the start of the game, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Get collect all that back up. Hope really just holding on to Hope at this point, trying to stay alive. We'll be able to survive at least one more Decimating Smash here, but won't be able to find that reset. As you can see, the Scion just not doesn't have enough gold in that nope. inventory right now. It's a full Mythic already complete by Ricky. Probably another full item to come through very soon. Whereas we see the Sunfire on the opposite side not yet complete. The Scion is not as tanked as we'd like to see. Very true. Alonzo must be pissed that the Twitch got ahead a little bit because he was hunting him down in the yeah. mid lane earlier. So we'll see what comes through out of that as well. Oh. Gangplank is going to do a ton of damage down here. As now, but now with no barrels in tow, going to be in trouble since your support oh, dealing no. all of that damage. The tick down here of the poison, it will be enough once again. Ninth kill of the game for Sincere support, who's definitely shown us that, hey, Twitch mid lane might not be the uh, worst thing in the world really showing up here and yeah. you know, with a champion like Twitch it can be really difficult to play into that in the later stages because of how much true damage that poison does but now Rock Boom in a little bit of trouble going to try and cleanse away from the stun here force the flash over that wall 4v2 in that mid lane from Shenandoah as they send enough people there to start to try and shut down Rock Boom here going to try and escape going to bring in the movement to bring a knock up in as Beautiful. well four man curse of the sad one into a great kick as well into the cannon barrage this is the fight that St. Clair were looking for they find one they find two they find three they find four. Sincere support, the last one to stay alive, but in this situation, the Twitch might not have what it takes. Kiting out Ricky really well, though. Not a lot of healing. That's going to be a kill in return coming through from the Mordecai's, but Alonzo comes over the wall, collects another one for Rock Boom there. A five for two fight in favor of St. Clair, and it looks really good for Shenandoah to start that one off. Yeah, for sure. The Twitch was able to pick up the kill on Ricky when he was able to get a gold bounty as well, so that is good in his part of the game. The, they played it really well. The, their fight lasted a lot longer than I expected, in all honesty. And they were so close to picking up that kill on Rocco. It was just unfortunate that he was able to get fresh in the Kalista Amumu alt and throw him into the, their entire team. But it was a great play by uh -oh. Saints as well. Scion ulti is going to come down mid. We did see it in the vision in, for a second. Rocco is 
Gonna dodge it, jump over the wall with the Q. And we'll see what happens now. It looks like the Oh, Flash is gonna come through from the Scion. He is gonna get the knockup off. And Ash is actually gonna pick up the shutdown on Rocco there. That is a great shutdown for Ash, especially yes. for that champion specifically. Yeah, especially because this Ash is so far behind at this point. Getting any goal that is possible to push yeah. them more towards this mythic is gonna be important. Curious to see what mythic they actually opt to go for. Looks like the Immortal Shield, though, with that extra long sword there, just mm -hmm. needs a little bit more survivability. But even then, Ash is more of a utility AD carry. It really doesn't matter how much damage you're able to put out as long as you're enabling the rest of your team to do damage. But Alonzo went to the back line, able to collect their 12th kill of the game. Keep counting it up for Alonzo here on this Lee Sin. And Ricky gonna be bringing people down into the Death Realm. Get knocked away is Alonzo once again, but Creighton falling down once again. Fresh trying to get involved any way that they can. Flashing over the wall even to try and find anything. It's actually going to be the Rift Road picked up by the side of Shenandoah, but here comes Twitch here. You got to be careful. Twitch doing so much damage to everyone. Not really able to find the right targets. Alonzo taking a lot of damage as well. Will they take down? Will they burn down? No, they will not. They're going to stay alive at the end of that fight. 13, 2, and 8 for the Lee Sin, that Death Dance working overtime. That was beautifully played by both Alonzo and Ricky there on the Twitch. They knew that he was, he randomly showed up and they were like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is not gonna end well <laughs> if we don't take him out. But Alonzo played it really well. I honestly thought that he died for a second and then I saw him still running around and I was like, hold on, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Something might, be, so I think I missed something here. <laughs> but uh, Toebreaker is just gonna push in bot lane. He ended up actually getting two turrets off of that. He did get the first initial bot lane turret earlier on when he did get ganked by the Twitch and he was just able to pick up the last one. Now they are gonna push through mid. They are not able to pick up the turret yet. They're able to get a little bit of damage in though, possibly push off Synergy off of them so then they can get back to their base safely. Oh no, Toebreaker! Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a tough situation here getting knocked back, but there's a lot of damage in tow. Prowler's Ooh. Claw, Throat Slash gonna get themselves out of their Rock Boom, finds a kill on the Sincere support in that mid lane as well. But I fear for the Gangplank's life, Mutiny is a hell of a sin, and that's gonna be, unfortunately, the, the Gangplank falling once again. Mid lane though, not looking so hot for the rest of Shenandoah as Rock Boom able to do a lot of damage. They're ticking down with that Ignite though, Hope looking for it as much as possible. F oh, Real no. is gonna be coming around the back, slam him into the wall, find another kill for yourself. Shannon Crystal Arrow gonna land onto Fresh as well, and Fresh not gonna be living long in this situation. Gonna try and get out of there as easy as possible. Gonna try and engage onto Creighton here, but even then, with the Kraken Slayer actually complete by the Ash, doing enough damage, it's gonna be Trebella cleaning up their second kill of the game. I was actually expecting the Immortal Shield Bow to come out for Ash because I feel like that would have been good here, especially with the survivability from it. Looking at the gold here, wow. Alonzo's <laughs> rich. Alonzo's very rich. Yeah. Can I be that? Do you wanna be that rich? Because I do. I mean, it depends on how we translate the gold into actual money. Cause, I mean, dollar it could, for dollar. It, 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 but it could be like, it depends on what dollar as well. Because I mean, I'd rather it be US dollars than Canadian dollars. Okay, you don't need to think about it. Stuff. Just say that you want $11,000. <laughs> I, I mean, $11,000 would be nice. Why are you so difficult? Why am I so, <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to bring the realism here. I'm not saying, yeah, I want to I wanna be in League of Legends. Yeah, that would be so, <laughs> no, just imagine like your average, average, like everyday Joe going in there and saying, yeah, I want to be in the League of Legends. You're going to be a minion. Let's be real. <laughs> if we want to take, take How it to- How dare you call oops. me a minion? Uh, I'm, I'm saying I would be a minion if I was in it. Well, you, yeah, that suits you, but I'd be better than that. You can be Jinx, who's banned. Why would you let this go? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't want to roast uh, you in front of all the viewers again, okay? <laughs> All right, it's uh, a little bit <laughs> difficult for the side of Shenandoah to get themselves out of this situation, though, as we see. They are holding on to that hope of the Twitch, though, and we look at that itemization. Once that Rabadons comes online, that Twitch passive is going to start to ramp up a lot of damage, and there's a little oh, bit no. of magic oh. to this coming through. Toebreaker coming down with that Kenabrage, trying to look for as much damage as possible, but might be in the wrong side of town. Great flash from Sincere to to dodge away from a little bit more damage and get that last little takedown. Unfortunately, they are going to be sent into the Death Realm. Ricky will find revenge in here. It's gonna be a little bit of a tough oh uphill battle God. here. Crate taking so much damage. That Darkness Rising passive doing so much work over time for the Mordekaiser. Looking for more Ethereals should be able to back out of this one. It was looking a little bit tough there, especially off of that level one invade, especially with the Twitch getting so much gold, but St. Clair just slapping them with their wallets at this point, picking up a couple of inhibitors, see if they're able to close out the game on this push. But I think far. it is. I think it is. A, this is going to be the end of the game. There's only two people left right now for the side of Senado, and they did <laughs> Look at the Rift Herald. <laughs> Rift Herald. Yeah, I've no Rift Herald just going to be walking top lane saying, hey, your base is not able to be saved. Hope still. 
on that top side of the map. You can see the defense of the Alamo Ooh, effectively nice here, trying to find it. Great two men. Curse of the Sad Mummy. Good kick into four as well from Alonzo. Cleaning up that highlight reel play, but thus far, no kills going over to the side of any or any team at that. So one for one thus far, but Ricky in that front line. Alonzo doing so much damage. That's going to be another kill picked up by Rockboom. Looking for as much damage as possible. Rockboom will fall. It's the Twitch still alive. You've got to kill the rat. The rat will ruin you. Alonzo going to get stunned up as well. Sincere support still alive. That's the realist dealing all this crowd control and Shenandoah. They are holding the game. It is not over yet. Alonzo tries to find an extra kill and they will get shut down. This game's not yet over. It's always the rats. It's always the rats. Huh. You can't tell me anything different. But good happens. try from Saints to close out that game there. Toebreaker, he's just been minding his business yeah. this entire game. He's, what does it say, two and seven? Yeah, yeah two he's two and seven. seven. He doesn't care. He, he doesn't care. He had a lane against the rat, okay? So, you know, for every great rat play there is, there has to be someone who falls victim to the rat. And unfortunately, that has to be the Gangplank this time around. But, <laughs> you know, it's it's Gangplank. They've got that global ultimate. They can drop down the yeah, cannon. Yeah, flash that anywhere. mastery. You're better. <laughs> yeah, since your support having a really good game, though, and this he is what we were talking about, we didn't really know where this Twitch was going, but mm -mm. mid lane was probably the last place we expected it. And of all things, it's doing quite well. It's keeping Shenandoah in this game. It's making St. Clair's lives difficult. And I think... It gives them something to work off of as well, saying, hey, you know, this Twitch pick, it's something we should probably keep in the back pocket for yeah. another day because th that can cause some teams a lot of issues when you're not expecting it. What are they doing? Oh, no. Oh, okay, they're just pushing mid. I thought that they were going to sit in the bush. Yeah, as you can see, sort of trying to pull off a pincer maneuver here, but unfortunately, St. Clair is strong enough to fight them on oh, any no, front. Rocko. Actually, Rockwell going to be taking a lot of damage. That's the rat picking up another one there. Open DPS. Oh. oh my goodness, though. Look at the damage coming through from Toebreaker. That's a 1400 health crit coming through. Throat slashes through him as well. It's a double kill picked up by Toebreaker. Pulling back Creighton as well in a death realm. It's going to be curtains for the side of Shenandoah as soon as the Twitch falls. Mice will play. Is that how that works? Cap something like that. I don't know. St. Huh? Clair Call is going to be taken down the Nexus at that one. And uh, wow, what a messy game from both of these teams nonetheless. But St. Clair come out on top once again with the 2-0. And yep. they look good throughout this entire series. Uh, I would like to give a very sincere apology to... What was the, the Twitch mid? We didn't believe in it. No. I, I Respectfully, I looked at it and I was like, nah. This, this ain't gonna work. No, so I was thinking about it and I was like, well, if he does gank and if he does set up a lot of kills, maybe he, like steals a little bit of Alonzo's camps in the jungle, it might work out for him. And it did. No. He played it great. Good for him. Also, Toebreaker. What? Toebreaker was just what vibing. Was that? It, it was just. No, no, no. I'm vibing. saying at the end. Yeah, you know, at the very end. You can talk to us. We, we know the we know the pain of dealing with a twitch. Also, like Rocco, me and you are gonna have a word after this, okay? I I I let it go. Okay, I let it go like two minutes ago. You're, I let it go, but he's gonna know. He has to know that he, I have to. I will sit down and have a talk with you. Like I'm your parent. <laughs> Regardless, here. Oh, as we should be able to bring that post game screen coming up shortly. Here, I mm -hmm. uh, just want to get a sort of vibe as to what ended up happening ah! in terms of the damage. Of note, yeah, We're that's a lot of damage coming through from that Mordekaiser. And I mean, to be fair, going up against a Scion, that's expected to happen. But even then, lots of damage coming through. And just an overall very, very strong performance from top to bottom from the side of St. Clair. As expected in a lot of ways, but still, Shenandoah doing a really good job of making that game too yeah, really interesting, sure. especially with that Twitch mid. They played it really, really well. It definitely looked like they went through the first game, they realized what they were up against as Saints are playing, having an amazing season so far. And they're like, okay, we have to think of something a little bit different in order to bring out just so we can prove that we also deserve to be here and we worked to be here as as much as saints did as well and they did it they proved that they can stay um they can stay in a game pretty long against us and they ha they can fight back and it was a great game overall i'm really happy with how that second game went first one it always sucks when it's a stomp for the casters because it's hard for us to commentate it and we're there's not much else to say but overall very well played from both the saints and both teams in the second game any other things Honestly, I think it's a good introduction to what Saints are willing to pull out here. And mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, we've seen very standard stuff from them, apart from maybe yeah. the Varus mid that's come through, but that has gained popularity in a sense as well. Interesting to see them pull out this Blith Frank jungle, sort of say, hey, we're willing to play a little bit off the norm here as well, pull out some new picks. And whether they pull mm -hmm. those out against different teams, you know, this is just sort of an introduction to that as well. So I'm very curious sure. to see how they evolve throughout the season as well, because this team has been such a pleasure to be able they to bring been. on to broadcast. It's been so fun watching them. And, you know, they even like to have fun, you know, Fresh can uh, 
can talk to at the times where we're just standing there like yeah i'm gonna stand here we'll, we'll see what happens at that we'll figure that one out after a while we'll, we'll talk with fresh as well on that but nonetheless <laughs> thank you all so much for joining us thank you to our production team as well dan for setting everything up around us josh for directing as well as ryan for doing the observant for us tonight of course we will catch you tomorrow i believe when we get some more rocket league action for you but yes. other than that we'll be back next week with more league of legends action for uh kaylee and myself good night everyone good Have night this rising passive coming through. Ricky doing so much damage. Here goes Lee Sin in. It's a smite fight. Bot lane, it's a first blood for Rock Boom as well, but it's going to be sincere support turning what that one around. What happened, Bot lane? I'm curious as to what happened there as well, but look at this. They're continuing the fight. It's a 3v2, but nonetheless, St. Clair continuing to find the kills. It's going to be the zombie form on that Scion there. Nonetheless, Toebreaker now forced to back off here at the realist, looking for as much damage as possible is going to be able to see how Shenandoah answer this one. Uh, Alonzo already coming into that mid lane. Sincere support going to be taking a lot of damage this one's not going to be the easiest to escape from going to be How did he pick up passive the kill? from the uh gangplank picking that one up meanwhile bot lane 2v2 plays once again creighton not really going to be able oh actually able to survive the rend so not going to be able to get that reset from rock boom but going forward gives no one at this point to assassinate literally anybody of course he's not in late game phase yet okay Alonso. that was smooth okay we get it Alonso knowing that the steadfast presence isn't there to block it through that kick Gonna have to be careful. This is not the best dive in the world uh -oh. coming through from St. Clair. Lots of damage being taken from both of them. Ricky popping that shield for that kill, which does uh, suck a little bit for Cinnado. But I'm gonna have to hold off on what I'm saying because Fresh is gonna go in to land a oh. stun. Oh, uh, Twitch yeah. apparently picked up the shutdown on Alonzo while we were watching this bot lane fight and Callista, or he's going um, Nasher's Tooth. Yeah might be going towards that AP build, but of course, Rock Boom and Fresh taking no prisoners at that. Toebreaker taking a lot of damage as well in that mid lane. That's the AP Twitch damage coming through already just a little bit oh, with that last little bit of damage. My goodness, Beautiful. Alonzo sliding through there, getting that ward hop going to come through as a Rock Boom. Let's see their chances at this one. Barrel going to be popped as well. Meanwhile, bot side, Alonzo looking for the nice. fight. Will collect that onto Sincere support as well. Here comes Fresh up on that top side to provide a little bit. Very impressive by the Twitch. Um, hopefully he's able to pull everything together and win this game for his team so that we can have a spicy game three. Scion ulti is gonna come through. So is Fresh is um, Curse of the Sad Mummy, but nothing is going to happen oh, for no. the Saints and both Saints players are gonna fall. Scion here, forced to flash over that wall. 4v2 in that mid lane from Shenandoah as they send enough people there to start to try and shut down. Rock Boom here, gonna try and escape, gonna bring in the Amumu to bring a knock up in as Beautiful. well. Four man, Curse of the Sad Mummy into a great kick as well into the Cannon Barrage. This is the fight that St. Clair were looking for. They find one, they find two, they find three, they find four. Sincere support, the last one to stay alive, but in this situation, the Twitch might not have what it takes. Kiting out Ricky really well, though. Not a lot of healing. That's gonna be a kill in return coming through from the Mordecai's, but Alonzo comes over the wall. Again, keep counting it up for Alonzo here on this lease. And Ricky gonna be bringing people down into the death realm. Get knocked away is Alonzo once again, but Creighton falling down once again. Fresh trying to get involved any way that they can. Flashing over the wall even to try and find anything. It's actually going to be the Rift Road picked up by the side of Shenandoah, but here comes Twitch here. You got to be careful. Twitch doing so much damage to everyone. Not really able to find the right targets. Alonzo taking a lot of damage as well. Will they take down? Will they burn down? No, they will not. They're going to stay alive at the end of that fight. 13-2. You're coming down with that. Enerbrage trying to look for as much damage as possible, but might be in the wrong side of town. Great flash from Sincere to, for, to dodge away from a little bit more damage and get that last little take down. Unfortunately, they are going to be sent into the Death Realm. Ricky will find revenge in here. It's going to be a little bit of a tough oh uphill battle God. here. Crate taking so much damage. That Darkness Rising passive doing so much work over time for the Mordecai's of looking for more Etherealist should be able to back out of this one. So one for one thus far, but Ricky in that front line. Alonzo doing so much damage. That's going to be another kill picked up by Rock Boom. Looking for as much damage as possible. Rock Boom will fall. It's the Twitch still alive. You've got to kill the rat. The rat will ruin you. Alonzo going to get stunned up as well. Sincere support still alive at the Realist. Dealing all this crowd control in Shenandoah. They are holding the game. It is not over yet. Alonzo tries to find an extra kill and they will get shot. Road slashes through him as well. It's a double kill picked up by Toebreak. They're pulling back Creighton as well in a death realm. It's going to be curtains for the side of Shenandoah as soon as the Twitch falls. Mice will play. Is that how that works? Cap Something like that. I don't know. St. Huh? Clair Paul is going to be taking down the Nexus at that one. And uh, wow, what a messy game from both of these teams. Nonetheless, but St. Clair come out on top once again with the 2-0. And yep. they look good to throw this entire series. Uh, I would like to give... Oh, that Darkness Rising passive coming through. Ricky doing so much damage. Here's Lee Sin in. It's a smite fight. Ball lane. It's a first blood.